In this video, we will be going over load combinations. which are found in chapter two of ASCE 716. The whole purpose of load combinations is to be able to combine different load types to get a single total load by applying load factors. If we take a look at section 2.2, we can find the definitions and abbreviations for all the different types of loading. So just to go over the main ones that you'll normally use, dead load is going to be D, L is going to be live load, L sub R is going to be roof live load, S is going to be snow load. R is going to be rain load. W is going to be wind load. And E is going to be earthquake load. Now there are two different types of design procedures that give you different load combinations. There's LRFD and ASD. LR LRFD is found in section 2.3 and ASD is found in section 2.4. Now it's gonna depend on which jurisdiction you're working with to determine if you're gonna use LRFD combinations or ASD combinations. So again, that's just on a jurisdiction to jurisdiction basis. Now, if we take a look in these sections, we pull out our AC 716. we will see that there are a number of different um, summation equations. Uh, for example, LRFD, you're gonna find the first one to be 1.4D, the second one is gonna be 1.2D plus 1.6L plus 0.5, L R S or R. And there's many more. So what you're going to do when you're looking at your load combinations is you're going to perform each of these equations and get whatever they equal to, and that's going to be total load for load combination one, total load for load combination two as you work your way down. And whichever one is the largest is gonna be the controlling load combination. So largest total load of whichever combination is going to be the controlling 
combination. So you're going to use this as your total load. So let's take a look at this number two combination just for a second. So again, we're going to have 1.2D one, 1 plus 1.6L plus 0.5LR or S or R. And again, that's going to be equal to your total load for combination two. So let's go ahead and look at this portion of the equation right there. So this here in parentheses, all that means is you're going to take the larger of these loads and stick it in there or you can do a 2a equation 2b equation and 2c equation where your 2a is gonna have your 1.2d plus 1.6l plus 0.5lr and then your b would have the same first part and then plus 0.5 s again that same first part plus 0.5 r for your 2c equation and then again this would just be your total load for 2a total load 2b total load 2c and then once you have all your other load combinations, three, four, five, et cetera, then again, you just compare all of your total loads and you pick the greatest. To be your controlling total load. However, if we go ahead and just take a look at these equations, you can see because this first part is all the same, then it's this value over here that's gonna be controlling. So again, whichever is larger here is gonna be the controlling version. So if you can recognize that, then it avoids you having to do three separate equations. And then you can just write out one equation and it'll take you, it'll save you time and energy. Again, if you can't just look at this and recognize that it's whichever is largest of these, go ahead and just write out the three different equations until you recognize this, and then you can go ahead and just skip that step. Another thing to pay attention to is some of these load combinations will um, repeat themselves or you'll be able to just eliminate them. For example, if we take a look at load combination number four, we're gonna have 1.2 dead plus 1.0 win plus L plus 0 0.5 LR or S or rain. So again, if we compare that to our second load combination, 0.2D plus 1.6L plus 0 0.5 L, R, or S, or R. And say we're looking at an example where it gives us dead load, 
live load and snow load. Then in this fourth combination, we don't have wind, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. That's gonna go to zero. So you notice that this part of the equation is the same, this part of the equation is the same, and this 1.6 is a lot greater than the one in number four. So we know already just by looking at it, by inspection, that number two is gonna be greater than number four. So you don't even need to write out that equation if you can inspect it and eliminate it. All right, and then just one more thing that I wanna go over is just a basic conceptual concept of combining different loads. So say we've got this three-story building and we've got some wind load being applied. And then we've got dead load. Roof live load. And snow load being applied to the roof. And of course, on all the individual levels, we've got dead load and live load. And that's going to be applied down here as well. So when you're combining loads, say we want to find the total load acting on the roof. So the loads being applied to the roof are going to be the snow, roof, life, and dead, and then also this portion of the wind right here, halfway between floors. So, how are we going to combine these loads? Well, since the wind is acting in the horizontal direction, and all the other loads are being applied in the vertical direction, we can't combine these together. We only combine all the lateral, and then we combine all the vertical. Again, it goes back to basic statics when we were doing sum of forces x and sum of forces y. We never combined and added those together. We always had to keep them separated because they're acting in different directions. You can only combine loads that are acting in the same direction. So when you do your load combinations, you're going to find a total vertical load and a total horizontal load and use those combinations. So, for example, to combine for these, you're going to go through all the combinations and plug in your S, L, R, and D. And then to find your horizontal, you're just going to plug wind into all of those load combinations to figure out which one controls Again, never, ever, ever, ever try to combine lateral and vertical forces. So we have a full example of combining different loads for ASD and LRFD in our written examples. 
and that's pretty easy to follow, so I don't think I need to go through that with you right now. However, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can send an email, taylors 2 drinksetter at gmail.com, or use the chat function on this webpage. Also, if you're just having, if you're just struggling to grasp this concept, head over to our tutoring page and you can set up an online or in-person appointment. And also, if you just have a very specific question about a homework problem, head over to our homework help page to figure out how you can receive help with your homework. <laughs>